the darkness continues. Peace, folk, and welcome back to another edition of the Propler Thought Series right here on the old TPOT YouTube page. I'm your host, X, of course, but you knew that already. That's why your black asses are here. Well, I'm back with another. And yes, the darkness does continue. Those of you who follow the Prophet of Thought series, you know here lately, I've been bringing you a lot of court proceedings because I've been watching quite a bit of it. And the majority of the time, I'm bringing you court cases that involve men, that involves brothers. But today, I'm bringing you something I call 3DD. And what 3DD stands for is three degenerate dames. Because like I said, usually, I'm bringing you the brothers. But today, I'm bringing you three females and they have colorful cases and they have colorful past today we're going to be asking the question when is a woman considered a degenerate because you all know we give women a wide girth when it comes to inappropriate behavior when it comes to inappropriate actions when it comes to criminality if you will so we're going to look at three cases and you get to decide whether or not these three women are degenerates now of course i will be stopping it periodically as always and giving some of my commentary but I will say this, these three women you are about to see, they are all innocent until the state can prove them guilty. So, that being said, let's get at it. Right, so we're going to start right here, good folk, and as you can see, uh, two of our case studies are already on the screen. Um, what you're looking at now, you're looking at the uh, Fulton County State Court. This is the courtroom of the Honorable Judge R. Mincy. Uh, the lady, I guess she's a decent judge. Um, I've seen worse judges than her. I don't watch a lot of her stuff, but I do watch a lot of the Fulton County State Court stuff. And she is one of the judges. All right. Um, like I've told y'all many times before, this is misdemeanor court. You know, small stuff, you know, possession of marijuana, driving without a license criminal trespass uh theft uh dui etc etc so everyone in here is charged with one or more misdemeanors and as i always say these people are innocent until the state can prove them guilty but let's get at it with our dark exodus three degenerate Dames, and as always, fair use, Negroes, fair use. Now look at the girl in the left-hand corner. Doing all this crazy mess with her head. She already starting out looking ridiculous. All right? And I'm not talking about that mess she got hanging on top of her head, neither. But I believe she's going to be the first one up. 
um like i said you know these these people are you know they are accused of misdemeanors right they're accused of misdemeanors and sometimes when they come in here they're accused of multiple misdemeanors and what normally happens is the judge comes in um you know reads them their rights let them know their right to remain silent right to a, an attorney etc etc their charges are read their uh their criminal history is read out you know all that kind of stuff but the judge is here so let's get at it good afternoon everyone good afternoon your honor good afternoon good afternoon judge good afternoon your honor Always a bunch of obscure noise going on. And look, look up in the top left corner. She rocking like one of those uh kids with the with the helmets on uh, uh in the little bus. But we continue. <laughs> All right, I see Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan, are you being um, everybody today? Litigation? Uh, Grace is here also. I'm sorry? Miss Grace is here. She's the. Oh, here. let's see. Do I see her? I'm looking for her. She's hiding in the corner. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And yeah, it usually takes a minute, man, for them to get organized and get settled. Uh, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, he's a public defender. If you swing over to the right, uh, over top of Judge Mincy, there's another public defender. And in the middle here, in the bottom, is one of the uh, assistant solicitor general. So basically a district attorney. And usually the people up top, you know, there, of course, are the defendants, the people who have been, you know, arrested and they're being arraigned their initial appearance. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. All right. If we're ready to get started, we'll get started. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Judge Regina Mincing, and we are going to begin our Fulton County State Court expedited accusations calendar. This is a calendar for cases in which individuals have recently been arrested and charged with certain misdemeanor offenses. Soon after their arrest, the Fulton County Solicitor General's office has already accused these cases of the offenses brought against them. And the case has been bound over to the Fulton County State Court. Nevertheless, this will usually be the defendant's initial appearance before a state court judge, so we're able to address several matters, including bond, possible arraignment, and also possible plea offer if one has been made by the state at this juncture. Uh, I will let you know up front, uh, and I'm looking for the date, Miss Grace, for the SAP reset date is what? December the 22nd. Right, December 22nd. And good folk, uh, she's talking about an SAP. I believe that's uh, sentence, sentencing and plea. Uh, you know, they get their sentence or if they make a plea or whatever the case may be. Um, like I said, the crimes that these people are accused of are usually misdemeanors. A lot of them, you know, petty crimes. You know, they, they usually are not going to do a whole hell of a lot of time. If you're here, you're probably not looking at a lot of time. 
you know, you may be looking at 30 days, 60 days, six months, you know, something like that in the county jail. But what the Honorable Judge Mincy failed to mention is that all of these defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty. But we continue. Fair use, Snake Rose. Fair use. All right. That is our reset date, December 22nd. I want to begin by advising everyone that this whole entire proceeding is being um, recorded as well as live streamed on YouTube, govern yourselves accordingly. I want to also let the defendants on this calendar know that you have certain constitutional rights. The first being that you have a right to remain silent. Anything that you say about the facts and the circumstances of your case can and will be held against you. I think a lot of times people don't understand that. They start blurting out a bunch of foolishness like I always tell y'all they do. The best thing for you to do when you're sitting in front of a judge, especially if you sit in front of a judge with no uh, uh, knowledge of what's going on as far as the law is concerned, the best thing for you to do is shut your ass up. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. You also have a right to an attorney to represent you at this juncture. Most of you should know who your attorneys are at this time. So listen to your attorneys before speaking, if at all. And uh, without anything else, we will get ready to start. All right. Uh, where are we starting? Courtroom two? Three. Position number 11. All right. All right, this is case number 22CR008215F. Zero, zero, it's that um, Stinson, you're charged with one count of criminal trespass and damage to property, and the second count of criminal trespass. That offense date is December the 9th, 2022, pretrial. Now, who just popped in is the pretrial services. And what they do is, you know, they come in and they tell you, you know, how many times the person's been arrested, whether or not they got warrants, whether or not they're on probation, you know, all that kind of stuff. Your whole uh, criminal past is read out by the guy that you see in the lower row in the middle. All of that gets put out, you know, I guess so the judge can make a, make a determination of whether or not. She should let your ass out or not. And I think it has a lot to do with how much bond you get, whether or not you get a surety bond, which is a bond that you have to pay, you know, 10 percent or a cash bond where you have to pay all of it. Or something else they do is a signature bond where you basically just sign on the line and walk out the door. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. 14 total. Last was back in February. Trespass DV. Now, she's been arrested 14 times before this time. 14. All right. And now he's about to read out the charge. Uh, February arrest, probation violations, ag robbery, robbery. She's uh, been arrested for robbery. So she's a robber. Uh, come off of 19 SC 165544 case number. Uh, felony obstruction conviction, abandonment of dependent child. Felony obstruction, abandonment of a child. 2021. 2020 criminal damage to property, second degree arrest. 2020 probation for ag battery and robbery. Another aggravated battery and robbery. Now watch her now. She's sitting up there rocking. She was convicted for those in 2019. 2018 misdemeanor possession of marijuana. 2017 terror. She likes smoking the sticky icky. From what evidence that was the NOD. That's it. All right. Thank you. 
So she's got a colorful criminal past. She robs. She smokes chronic. She batters people. She does all kinds of mess. And here she is sitting up here again today. All right. With these two big ass ridiculous freaking ponytails hanging off the top of her damn head. Uh, when she take them off, she probably look like a 14 year old boy. But, <laughs> but we continue. Bear use, Negroes. Bear use. All right. Is it ASG? Is it Satoli? Satoli. Okay. I can't make sure I'm not mispronouncing it. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Um, on December 9th of this year, police responded to the BP on Fulton Industrial in reference to a customer damaging property in the store and refusing to leave. Damaging property in the store and refusing to leave. Now, this is something we see a lot of, right? Because you can just envision it, right? You can just envision, it, envision her in a store just knocking stuff over and refusing to get out. Because for some reason, these dizzy, ditzy ass broads will not leave your premises, your store, your business, your house, when you ask them to. It's, it's the craziest of things. And while they won't leave, they're constantly saying, I don't want to be here anyway, which doesn't make any sense. I've always found it strange that two things with Negroes, especially broads, they always want to be somewhere where they're not wanted. And they always want to be somewhere where they claim they don't want to be. It's totally absurd but we continue fair use negroes fair use upon the officer's arrival he observed the floor of the store covered in many destroyed snacks drinks and food the store manager advised that the defendant came inside the store and began throwing and damaging almost all of the food and drinks in front and that was in the store just came in there and just destroyed the whole store come on we've seen it a million times we already know what this looks like, right? One of these old crazy broads walking around and they're knocking stuff off of counters and, 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 and kicking stands over and throwing sodas and acting like a straight zoo animal. We've seen it all before happen. But we continue. She was asked to leave multiple times, but she refused. Oh, absolutely. You ask her to leave, she's definitely staying now. I think maybe they should do the opposite with them, right? Instead of saying, get out of my store, they should stay. They should say, please stay in my store. Please stay in here. Maybe then they'll leave. Who knows? But we continue. <laughs> Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. The defendant admitted to the um, committing the acts, and she also stated that she did it because she wanted to go to jail. Oh. I don't give a damn. I want to go to jail. And look at her. Just look in your top left corner of your screen. Look at her. Boy, she's sitting there like, uh, like some Cheshire cat. Like, oh, whatever. Just a fool. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Judge, uh, the state's bond recommendation is a total of a $3,000 surety bond. For count one, criminal trespass and damage to property is $2,000. Count two, criminal trespass, $1,000 surety bond. Stay away from the incident location, 4335 Fulton Industrial Boulevard in Atlanta, Georgia, and no drugs, alcohol, or weapons while out. Judge Estate is concerned that this defendant, she does run the risk of reoffending due to the disturbing facts of this case. Furthermore, she has an open case for criminal trespass family violence with an offense date of February 27, 2022. Already got another open case. Another criminal trespass. A family violence case. Got a case going on right now, but what is she doing? 
She in some store acting a damn fool. Just unbelievable. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. And that's case number 22CR001102F. She was also arrested for criminal damage to property in the second degree twice within the same year. And that was in 2020. Just stay in stores, stay in somebody's uh, place or premises or property. She just stays in there destroying their stuff. That's her thing. Destroying people's stuff. <laughs> That's her thing. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use and nothing further from the state all right mr finley this is your case it is judge okay. um miss stinton is uh 22 years old um, now she's 22 years old 22 and she's got all of this stuff in her past all right all of this stuff in her past she's been a quote-unquote adult for four years she's got robberies more than one aggravated batteries more than one multiple cases of destroying people's property she's got an open case right now criminal trespass family violence meaning she whooped up on somebody in her family and here she sits again right now with three more charges but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. She does have two kids, a seven-year-old. Of course she has kids. Are you kidding me? That's standard. That's standard. I probably should have titled this These Old Degenerate Moms. <laughs> Of course she has kids, but we continue. Old and a two-year-old, um, I do have a good address for Now she's got a seven-year-old and a two-year-old. She's 22, right? That means a first kid she had when she was 15, right? She's 22, she's got a seven-year-old. Her first kid, 15. Got a two-year-old, but this is what she's out doing. She's out doing this with a baby at home and a bigger baby at home. This girl's life has been on the, the path of crap for the past seven years. And it doesn't seem like it's clearing up anytime soon. Know how I know? Look where she's sitting. So what? happens to those kids while she's in here what happens if she doesn't get out of here for the next month two months six months where are they gonna be oh yeah i know probably with her mama her mama is gonna be burdened with the children now because she want to be out wrecking freaking a uh, 7-elevens but we continue fair use snake rose fair use Miss Stenson, she is originally from the Atlanta area, so she does have community ties and does have family here as well. Miss um, Stenson does not know any numbers, any phone numbers offhand, so she is unable to contact anybody to help her bond out, and she definitely does not have any money herself. Um, and while I do recognize some of the recent cases that she's had, um, she is presumed innocent on those open cases your honor um so due to the fact that miss stinson herself does not have any money does not know any numbers she's unable to contact anybody no numbers can't contact anybody can't get in contact with family nobody can bail her black ass out but she's freaking running around destroying stores now, does this sound like a person who is not a degenerate? Does this sound like a person who is trying to improve their life? Or better yet, improve the life of those babies she has at home? Because I say again, a seven-year-old and a two-year-old. 
but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Uh, any bond in this case, Judge, would effectively be a no bond. And that's why I'm asking for a signature bond. And is she she's 22. Um, I don't know if I recall. Did you give me any work history or? She does not. She, yes, Judge. So she's unemployed right now. Um, she is looking for work. Here. They're always looking for work. What was she trying to look for work for, uh, Mr. A public defender was she looking to uh, looking for a job at uh, destroying uh, the bodega was she looking for a job as a janitor to clean up after she destroyed the bodega I mean I I'm confused here I I'm confused mr. public defender and I believe so are you I think you're making that up but we continue fair use Negroes fair use and look at the <laughs> look at the look on the solicitor general's face. She's like, this freaking girl ain't trying to find no job. But we continue. Your Honor, but as of right now, um, she is not employed. Does she reside alone? You said you have a current address, or is that with family, relative, or? I believe she said it is with family. Judge, it's in uh, yeah, Kenilworth Drive address in Atlanta. Yeah, she live at a mama house. She ain't got no job. She got two damn kids. One of them's only two. You know she living at her mama house. You know she is. But we continue. Okay. All right, I'm going to... Um... Now you see the judge kind of hesitating, right? Because I've seen this judge with people who had similar criminal histories as this girl. Like they read off charges. She's got like felonies in her background. She's been convicted of robbery and all that kind of stuff. If it was a brother, his bond would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of about $6,000. I've seen brothers with less of a criminal history than her and their bond was like seven grand and i'm talking about a surety bond not a signature a surety so they have to come up with um seven hundred dollars to a bondsman to get out right now she was hesitating with her how much you want to bet with all the charges she got and she's got a colorful criminal past I bet you her bond won't be nowhere near $7,000. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Order the $3,000 surety bond, which will be uh, $2,000 on the criminal trespass and damage to property, $1,000 on uh, the straight criminal trespass. What did I tell you? Because usually... From what I've seen with this judge, she gives out a $3,000 surety bond on that charge. I've seen it a million times. Her whole bond is $3,000 and she has three separate charges. Why do you think she hesitated? She hesitated because she's a broad. If that was a brother, that brother's bond with those charges, and all the felonies he's got in his past, I'm telling you, his bond would be about seven, eight grand easy. But not for her. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. Work total $3,000 surety bond. Uh, stay away from the, is it the BP? That's um, correct. Okay, on 4335 Fulton Industrial Boulevard. Um, stay away from that location. Um, no drugs, alcohol, or weapons uh, while on bond. And I think that should conclude that case. Oh, I'm, I see a message. Was there a third charge? Um, we, Lisa told me. Yes, Judge. We plan to null process that. Okay. So you're null processing the marijuana third charge. That's
Okay, also, you heard what they just said. She also got caught with the sticky icky in her pocket. What did the Solicitor General just say? It's a non-pros. For those of you who don't know what that means, that means they're not going to prosecute her on it. Do you understand? Not only is she getting a pass with a low bond, they're not even going to prosecute the marijuana. They're not going to prosecute her. She's got open cases already. Multiple felonies in her past. She's in the store. She's wrecking the store. She gets criminal trespass. Destruction of property. Get caught with the chronic in her pocket. They're not even going to prosecute that. non pros That means we're not going to prosecute her on it. And just think about this because we're talking about degenerate dames, right? She's got two kids. She's 22. One's seven, one's two. She's been having babies ever since she was 15. Committing robberies, all right? Multiple robberies, more than one over the past three to four years, which means she was doing these robberies after she had already had her kid. Because her kid is seven. The robberies were in like 2019, 2020, all right? So her kid was like four or five then, and she's doing robberies. She has no job, probably lives with her mama, but somehow she manages to have weed in her pocket as she's destroying the store. I'll let you good folks decide. Is she a degenerate? But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. All right, Judge, yes. Uh, and have you all sent that to, to uh, Mr. Jordan? Not yet, but we, I'll do it as soon okay. as possible. Okay. All right, thank you. Because that will, if she makes bond, that'll hold her up. All right, that should conclude this case. Yes, we have position number five. Okay, next up, we have this broad here. You're going to listen to her charge. And of course, I'm going to be stopping it momentarily. Because her charge is kind of interesting too. And you will also see how she gets a different type of treatment than how a brother would get treated. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. <laughs> This is case number 22CR00820 8208B. Erica Jackson charged at one count of battery family violence. Um, the offense date is December the 8th, 2022. Free trial. It's a second arrest. 2014 battery DV. Okay. This is only her second arrest. So. She doesn't have a lot in her criminal background. So she's been keeping herself, you know, pretty clean criminally over the course of years. She has that working in her favor here, right? But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Okay. And this is, is the prosecutor? Angela Waldrop for the state judge. Oh, okay, Ms. Waldrop, thank you. Yes. Your Honor, with respect to uh, this charge of battery family violence, it stems from an incident when the victim actually went to uh, the incident location to pick up his children uh, that he has with the defendant. <clears throat> okay, baby daddy, baby mama drama. But we continue. 
uh, they did get into a verbal argument in which the defendant uh, not only pushed the victim, uh, but as stated in the police report, blacked out um, and grabbed an object and struck the victim in the face with that. Uh oh, grabbed an object, struck him in the face. But we continue. Object. Um, there were no injuries that the officer could observe to the defendant, um, but there were clear injuries to the facial area of the victim. Uh, given the facts and circumstances, Your Honor, of the uh, allegation, the state is requesting a bond in this case of $5,000 straight or good bond. We're asking that the defendant have no further contact with Darian Lane, that there be a third party transfer of the children, that the defendant have no drugs or alcohol while on bond, as well as no weapons on or about her person. Uh, and as pretrial stated, there is a, a 2014 arrest for battery family violence as well, Judge. Okay. Now, that's not important. You know, it was eight years ago. So, you know, when it does look at something that far ago, it don't really matter. But, but the fact still remains that she did the same thing eight years ago. All right. But put a pin in that. We continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Um, PD McLeod, I should say. Yes, yes Your Honor. Good now. This public defender here is also, I, I tell y'all all the time about these horrible public defenders, right? This lady is not the worst of the public defenders, but she's definitely uh, the, the second or third uh, uh, worst. Yeah, she's, def she's not the worst, but she's pretty high up there on the worst uh, uh, public defenders list. <laughs> And you will see why. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Good afternoon. I'm the defender, McLeod. Yes. That, yes, Your Honor. My client, Miss Jackson, is 33 years old. Now, she's 33. All right. So she's a bit older than the girl that was just on here before that we were talking about. So she's 33. All right. A, a well-established adult. Uh, too old to be doing what she's doing, of course. All right. She's a fully fledged adult with kids, obviously, because you know they all got kids. All right. Now, obviously, the police were called because allegedly she picked up some type of object and hit the brother in the face with it. And kudos to him for calling the goddamn police on a black ass. Because guess what? If he had did something like that to her, she would have called the police on him. She would have. Who knows? She might have called the police. But when they got there, his face was bleeding and hers wasn't. So somebody had to go to jail. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. She is the mother of four children. Four kids. They range in ages... 13, 11, 8, and 4. The three eldest she shares with the alleged victim, Your Honor. She tells me that they were going to have an exchange when she found out that um, the alleged victim had left the children alone. He had neglected the children and she was... Isn't that always the story? Oh, I did what I did to him because he had neglected the kids. Isn't that always the story? Isn't it always? But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Upset they were arguing about it when he attempted to, to strike her. and that Oh, he attempted to strike her. Attempted to strike her. So what? She blocked it and grabbed an object and hit him as she was blocking it because, you know, She's uh, a martial artist. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. That was when she hit him in self-defense, Your Honor. My client is gainfully employed. She just started a new job, she tells me, at the post office just a few weeks ago. She is the only one who takes care of these... Um... 
Okay, she works at the post office. So those of you who are on her mail delivery route, make sure you don't say nothing to her because she might grab something and hit you in the face with it. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Sorry, children, Your Honor. I know that her trial has said she was previously arrested, but that was in in 2014 i believe that was a long time ago and i do not believe she was convicted on that charge at all your honor i would ask the court to give her a signature bond so she can get out of jail get back to work get back to taking care of her children now like i always say here it comes again now nothing against the public defender because it's their job to get up there and say hey look you've been here these many years you this old you work here you do that your mama here your daddy here your dog here your gerbil your rabbit you know that's their job to get up there and, and, and say this pretty generic thing about you right but this is the thing they get up here and they say well you know this person works this person's got kids they're the only one to take care of the kids and etc etc but how come all of these reasons that get lobbied before the court and you want the court to consider these things that are being lobbied but these things did not stop you from doing what you're doing the fact that you have this job the fact that you have these babies the fact that they depend only on you to take care of them none of this crossed your mind before you did what you did none of this crossed your mind before you picked up an object and hit somebody with it you didn't think about hey i got a job i gotta take care of my kids i gotta go to work no but when you get in here the court should consider it i i just think it's ridiculous it seems like to me this should even been said what i think should be said most of the time when they get up here is number one They've been in the area X amount of time. That seems relevant. They're not a flight risk. That seems relevant. They have a job that they go to. So it's not like they not going to show up to court because they have responsibilities. That, that seems relevant. The fact that you got kids and the fact that they're you the only one that, that takes care of them to me is BS. It shouldn't even be mentioned. Because to me, it seems like a ploy to pull on the heartstrings of the judge. Oh, I got to get back to my kids. My kids need me. Well, your kids needing you didn't stop you from being in here, did it? Did it? But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use who are really her biggest concern and this this um this altercation happened because she was concerned about the well-being of the children you yeah so concerned about the well-being of the children that she hit their father in the face that's what i'm talking about using the children as a shield the pd is saying oh the children are her primary concern no, the hell they weren't. No, they weren't. Because if the children was on her mind that hard, she would see this down the road. She would have thought past that moment and said to herself, hey, look, I'm concerned with my kids. I don't want to mess around and be locked up because I'm going to be away from them if I do this. Right? But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Anna. Nothing further. All right. Now her, y'all already know, she's getting a signature bond because number one, she doesn't have a lengthy criminal history, right? And number two, she hit a man in the face. That's nothing. Especially when you're talking about a female judge. That's nothing. Because I'm pretty sure, even if this is a total lie, that the man attempted to hit her or he was doing something to the kids, even if that's all a lie, 
the judge believes it. So she's going to get the benefit of the doubt. And being that she gets the benefit of the doubt, she gets to sign and walk the hell on out. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. I am going to order a $5,000 signature bond. Told you. Uh, through pretrial or judge. I'm going to order that there be no drugs, alcohol, or weapons while on bond. I'm going to order that there be no further contact with Darian Lane. I will order the third party transfer on visitation with children so that uh, Ms. Jackson would find some other relative or friend to facilitate any visitation so that there is no contact between her and Mr. Lane. And um, I will order the uh, one day anger awareness course through pretrial. Thank you. All right, that should conclude it. As we have position number 10, Ms. Smith. Yeah, get on out of there with your damn uh, 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 blonde pigtail. You're going to go on outside, walk on out the door right now. You know, they always tell them when these type of things happen to not have any contact with the person. How much you want to bet that she's going to have contact with that man again? How much you want to bet she'll be right back at his house? How much you want to bet that she will not go along with these bond conditions? How much you want to bet? So I asked the question of you good folk, even though her case isn't as severe or bad as the first example. Is she a degenerate? But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. All right. <laughs> There's always so much damn noise. Like, what do they be doing? What do they be uh, uh, banging their shoes up against the desk? Uh, what? what? What's going on in this damn courtroom? Are they uh, playing the drums with pencils and pens? What? <laughs> but we continue. Uh, let's see, set position 10. All right, this is 22 CR 008214J. Okay, you can see in the second row at the right, pretrial services is here. He is going to read out the criminal past. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. Antoinette Smith. Charge of one count of theft by taking. The offense date is November the 19th, 2022. Pre-trial. Okay, theft by taking. Not that major of a charge, but we continue. Uh, I count about 10. Last arrest. About 10 arrest. This was in July for trespass damage out of DeKalb County. Cleared no low to disorderly conduct in 2017. 2012, no low for obstruction. 2010, disorderly conduct dismissed. Got a 2012 out of Florida, battery conviction. 
2015 probation violation. Another 2015 probation. Another 2015 probation. 2016 aggravated battery deadly weapon. Uh, it just says disposition. It says filed. That's it. All right. So her criminal history goes back seven years. Probation, battery, obstruction, uh, disorderly conduct, criminal trespass. Now, these charges are relatively minor, but there's quite a handful of them. So she has quite the criminal past. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Nothing further. All right, that's it. Thank you. Uh, ASG Stoli. Yes, Judge. On November 19th of this year, the victim received a notification through her ring doorbell camera, and she saw the defendant removing the camera while stating she will kick the door down. <laughs> How much y'all want to bet that was her girlfriend? Because y'all do realize the most violent couples are lesbian couples the most domestic violence that goes on goes on between lesbian couples i know everybody thinks is you know some man beating up on his wife or some dude beating up on his girlfriend but no the most violent couples are lesbian couples folk but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. The victim told officers that the defendant used to live with her, but she kicked her out a couple days prior to the incident. Oh, yeah. They broke up. And she told her, get your ass out. <laughs> and like always, like I said earlier, they always want to be where they are not wanted or somewhere where they claim they don't want to be it is utterly amazing but we continue fair use negroes fair use judge the state's bond recommendation is a total of three thousand dollars surety bond stay away from the incident location 543 Oliver Street, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia, and no further contact with the victim, Deja Henson. And that's spelled D as in dog, E J A H, last name H I N as in Nancy S O N. Judge the state is concerned that this defendant does serve as a flight risk due to um, her being a multi state offender. Multi state offender. Got crimes in all different states. All right. You know that ludicrous song, I got hoes. I got hoes in different area codes, area codes. But with her, it's different. She sings, I got crimes. I got crimes in different area codes, area codes. <laughs> but we continue. There use negroes bear use and she also um has a history out of florida she serves as a danger to the community considering that she has a conviction and an arrest for battery and disorderly conduct the solicitor general believes she is a danger to the community plus she got crimes in other area codes. She may disappear. Go to Florida. Who knows? But we continue. She runs the risk of reoffending due to having an open case for criminal trespass out of DeKalb County. Got an open case right now in another county. With an offense date of July the 27th of this year. Nothing further, Judge. That's the craziness of a lot of this stuff, right? A lot of these people, they come through here and when they get locked up, they got other open cases in other places. They got open cases because this is Fulton County. They got open cases in DeKalb County. 
They got open cases in Clayton County. Like, they on probation in another state. They on probation in another county. Like, when is enough enough? When do you say, okay, I need to stop committing crimes? When do you stop? But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. Okay. P.D. Finley. Yes, Judge. Uh, Miss Smith is uh, 31 years old. Um, 31. Not a kid. But we continue. She is employed. Uh, she works for Instacart. Um, that being said. She works for Instacart. She said that she makes around 150 to $200 per month. Judge. $200 a month? That's like not working at all. <laughs> but we continue. Judge, um, she does have her GED. And um, she has been, though, Atlanta in, in Georgia is her home base. And she's been here um, for a combined 21 years. So she does have community ties, Judge. Um, like I said, um, she makes 150 to $200 a month. So a 300 or $3,000 surety bond. And we might as well go ahead and set it at 50,000 because that's <laughs> he said, you might as well go ahead and set it at 50,000. This is crazy, man. When you listen to some of these public defenders, because they sort of, they sort of remind me of, I remember Al Sharpton saying this, you know, not like I'm no Al Sharpton fan, but he said something a while back and it made a lot of sense. He said he's asked to give eulogies at people's funerals. And usually these funerals are funerals of young men who have been killed. And he said a lot of times he just has to make up stuff. Yeah, just makes it up because, you know, they haven't accomplished Jack. They haven't done Jack. So he just kind of has to make the eulogy up. And I think with some of these public defenders, it's the same thing. They just make stuff up. Oh, they're looking for work. Oh, you know, they're not a threat to the community. Uh, they, they got a GED. Uh, they make $200 a month. You know, they just kind of just go along and just kind of make stuff up. Just make it up. And look at the, the solicitor general in the middle. Look at the freeze frame there. Even she's like, this don't even sound right. <laughs> He's making this up. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. What it would be to her. There's no way she'd be able to pay that. And she does not have anybody that'd be able to pay for her. So any type of surety bond um, would effectively be a no bond and she'd be punished um, for having a low income. So I am asking for you. She's not being punished for having a low income. She'd be being punished because she snatched a, a ring doorbell off somebody's house and threatened to kick their door in. Did she do that because of low income? Mr. Public Defender. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. A signature bond on behalf of Miss Smith. The judge hesitates once again. I don't think she would hesitate if this was a brother. Like I said, her criminal past isn't that bad, but it is colorful and it dates back to 2016. Would she hesitate this much if it was a brother? I don't know, but we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. All right, I'm going to um, issue a $2,000 surety bond. Um, the amount of $2,000. No drugs, alcohol, or weapons while on bond. I'm going to order no further contact with the victim, Deja Henson. I'm going to order a stay away from 543 Oliver Street, Northwest. And I um, think that'll be it for now. Anything else, counsel? Nothing further, Judge. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to stop it there. Um, this last case, I, I mean, like I said, her charges weren't that bad, but she does have charges in other states. She's got open cases right now. She's 31 years old. She's too old to be doing this crap. She is. And I'm glad the judge put a surety bond on her. Don't just let her sign and walk out. No. Pay a bondsman. Get bonded out. Because I say again, if it was a brother, the judge wouldn't have thought twice about slapping him with a $3,000, $4,000 surety bond. She wouldn't have thought twice about it. Wouldn't have thought twice about it. So I think everybody should be treated the same. I don't think you should be treated differently because you got a funk box instead of a penis. You're doing crime, you're out there getting locked up, you're destroying property, you're hitting folks, you're doing all this foolishness. Your ass should be locked up and you should be treated just like a brother would. You should. No exception because you're a girl. Get the hell out of here. And the crazy thing is, is that usually if the judge is a man and he sees these broads, they have a tendency to go a little lighter on these broads. Yeah. They might have would have been even a little more lenient than the Honorable Judge Mincy here. So I asked the question of this uh, robber of ring doorbells. Do you good folk believe that she's a degenerate? I will let y'all decide. But we're going to wrap this up, man. Um, I appreciate you good folks coming through as always. Um, you could have spent your time anywhere. You decided to spend it here. It is appreciated. I don't take you good folk lightly, man. I never have and I never will. You got my word on that. So. With that, I will leave you good folk with three words you know, like I always do. Open your mind. Peace, folk. Darkness continues. Only from T O T. -O -T.